is Victoria V. Pierre, and I live in Edgar, but I'm formerly from Vashri. We have uh, four sisters and one living brother now. The other two died. It was in February, one of them died. My mom was uh, Enola Dumas, and then she was a Narcisse when she married my dad. And my dad was, his name was Felix Narcisse. He was a grave digger. He must have did that from when he was real young mm -hmm. until he, he couldn't do it anymore. But he used to dig grave. And uh, he used to tell us that when he dig grave and sometimes the coffin didn't want to go down, so you just take your shovel and do it like that and, you know, it'll have a hole and that water will go in and it, you know, it bring it down. Mm -hmm. And he said when he was coming out, people were so poor that they couldn't even afford to pay nobody to dig a uh, grave. So he more or less used to do it just to help them out. I was small when, when I grew up there. The only thing I can remember about Evergreen is those, those trees that, that, that were there. But we did live there, but I was a little bit too young to remember what really went on there. After Evergreen, we moved to St. Philip. That's where I spent most of my time when I was growing up. Let me see, we stayed there um, maybe about six or seven years or, or longer. I wouldn't call it a plantation, but they had people that lived there, but they all worked for, you know, bosses and, and, and stuff. It's not that, that that was their own houses or anything like that. And then from there, we moved to Vashri. And then we, we lived in this plantation in Vashri. I remember living there, and it was the typical, uh, you know, we grew up there and, and everything. We were poor, and I guess we didn't even really know we were poor. And my dad made us work, like go dig potato and go mm -hmm. catch logs in the river for firewood. And we had to go out there and cut grass every day to come back and feed the hogs. And uh, the boys and the girls, everybody had to go back there and go get grass. Well, they didn't have no specific job. And when the well would run dry, uh, we had to go get water mm -hmm. out of the river. We was young when we, we had to go out there and work. Sometimes when he would tell us the day before we have to go dig potatoes, I say, oh, oh no. Jesus, <laughs> that was, oh. Mm -hmm. And then we used to, he used to raise hog where they call uh, a bushery. And he would get up early in the morning, he had a few uh, people that come help him kill the hog or whatever. And that poor hog, they had to dig him up, you know, stick him in here. And that was an all day thing that killing that, that killing that hog. And it, that wasn't. My sister, she was a little tougher than me. She would go there and catch the blood, you know, had to put the blood boo there. He had to, and then he had cows. <laughs> We had to go get the cows, and sometimes they would, in, late in the evening, they all would come to the gate, and we would just let them in. And sometimes they might have one that was stubborn or something, he didn't come to the gate, so you had to go out and, and go find them. It was hard. I mean, like I said, Daddy made us work. We, like, they had, um, I remember living over there where they had, we used to do a green beans, and we had to go pick the green beans, and then they would, uh, we would pick the green bean and then it would bring that green bean all the way to South Ashley, mm -hmm. you know, to go away it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We had to work and then we had to bring the money home because mm -hmm. Daddy had seven children and he was working in a field. You know, it, it was hard. And then when they would break corn, we would have to go after they finished breaking corn or whatever. He would have us to go after, you know, to pick up the one that they threw. And I'm sure he was throwing some on the side, you know, stuff like that. And I work, my sisters in not work. But one thing I didn't do, they had a rice field. And when the people would go back there to do the rice, he would take my brothers and them, my sisters and them, and they would go back there to, to get rice. And then he would bring it in the front, and then somehow they, they would pound it or whatever, you know, to, to get that. I remember my sisters and them telling me how, she said they had so much mosquitoes out there. They said all on his back and all over. And, and the reason why I didn't go was because I used to kind of do little house housework for, for the people that was around, so I, I didn't go there. Yeah, I work in the, the, in, in the, the, the white people houses. 
I was like dusting and, and, and you know, and mopping and, and I was working. <laughs> I was about maybe, and I worked for those people until I graduated from high school. Yeah, I was about maybe 10, 11, somewhere around there. When school was out, we work. When school was out, they had all this garden, and our daddy used to make a garden. He had to go out there, and, and he would get the, the, the vegetable out of the garden, and then he will come home, and we had to clean it, and we had to jar it, and that was all doing something. And, that was the, and then they used to, you know, like people had pressure cooker, but we used to have some big old cans mm -hmm. that they would put the jars in. We had a grocery, uh, I mean a store where you go get seeds and stuff like that, but the, the stuff like the okra, they, they take it like from this year and they let it dry and then hold it until the next season and you know, they plant it. And they got a lot of stuff that they, they would, you know, it would be seed where they, they can take it and just let it dry and then when it's time to plant the garden, they'll just start all over again. In the garden, they had Okay, they had snap beans, green beans, they had uh, bell pepper, we realized cabbage, um, sugar cane, you know, just for us to cut and suck. And uh, he had all kinds of stuff in his garden. He used to fish a lot too. Like I said, you know, he had a family, so he had mm -hmm. to get out there and get. It was hard. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, you know, it mm -hmm. was. But then, I said it was hard, but you know, we was poor, but we didn't know we was poor. Mm -hmm. We was happy. Oh, that, that we had a lot of flowers. <laughs> we had a lot of flowers, same dresses. That we did. We did. And Mama used to sew some. She wasn't a big seamstress, but she sewed enough to, you know, so far as he had flower sacks, yeah. I remember my mom used to make mattress out of moss. In the summertime, and you had to go out there and then you had to get it and then you had to wash it and then you leave it out there to dry and then it came back and, and they had the, the, the ladies that, they had a big old long needle, right? Bigger like that and they would just, you know, stick it and make it like a mattress. And they made quilt and but they just did that with with each other, you know, mm -hmm. kind of in a neighborhood. Okay. Mama did all the cooking. Okay. Oh, she made gumbo. She made stew. She made crawfish bisque. We call it crawfish stew, but they call it a toothache. She used to make shortbread. You know, I don't know if you know that that, that round mm -hmm. shortbread. But then she re she also made regular bread. I mean, you know, like loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. She did that too, and she used to make butter. They take the cream off the milk and put it on the side. I don't forgot how she made that. And then they whip it, and then they'll have butter. Animal wise, we had a car, we had a hog, we had chicken, we had duck, we had uh, goose, we had uh, he had rabbits. <laughs> I never did eat the, the rabbits because the rabbits, they wasn't wild, but they, they, they were eatable. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, he had rabbits, they had quite a turtle, I don't eat turtle either. Mm -hmm. Well, back then they had a lot of turtles, so what they did, they would catch turtles and then put them in that barrel and just leave them there until, you know, they would need them. Yeah, he had everything. And I have a sister now, she loved to cook, but mm -hmm. cooking is not mild. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we do... Like right now, they taught us how to smoke, make undoing and, and, and stuff like that. Well, I told them children the last few years, that was my years, I, I'm, I'm not messing with that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's up to them to learn if they want to. Mm -hmm. But we had like a, you, you had like a barrel and then you get like sugar cane and you get like you cut your meat and then you got to yeah. stuff it, put it in that barrel and then you cover it. and. Of course, you got to watch it all the time because you don't want it to, the flames mm -hmm. to flare up. We do that. I used to do that. I'm mm -hmm. not doing that anymore. It's mm -hmm. too much work. We more or less all grew up with Creole. And you know, right now, we, uh, sometimes we sisters get together, we kind of trying to talk Creole and we have, you forget it if you don't use it. We get old. Go back to English. <laughs> now my children said they wish they knew how to talk it.
But my grandmother, uh, she couldn't talk English at all. She was hard of hearing, so we had to kind of get to her and she would read uh -huh. your lip like mm -hmm. that. And I mean, whenever she would go somewhere, you know, somebody would always be with her right after because she, she couldn't speak it at, at all. And my dad uh, uh, spoke uh, English not too well because we really learned English when we went to school because uh, before that, mom and dad and all of them, they all speak Creole. And most everybody in the neighborhood, they all spoke Creole. Some of them children went to school and they couldn't speak English at all. And they, they had to go home or, or they taught them how to speak English because they didn't know how to speak English at all. Uh, I didn't know Peter could speak Creole either. That's my husband. I was talking about him. and. <laughs> After I found out he knew how to talk Creole, I said, boy, I must have said a whole lot of things. He <laughs> but I was surprised, and then he speaked that pretty good, too. He, he knew, you know, he knew a lot of That's why I say you don't go nowhere and speak Creole and think you the only one that knows. I mean, I never did that again. It was a little bit separate, yeah. Okay, they got this big old white house, and I think they have a house kind of on this side. Yeah, I think she told me that's where we were living at. The only thing I could remember that I always stick to me is the big old trees, mm -hmm. you know, and, and little houses back there. But she told me daddy always would tell them don't don't go play in the back, so they stay to the front. But he didn't. He, uh, she told me he didn't live. He, he didn't stay there too too long, because they they wanted him. In other words, it would be like what you call running time. Like like he, you know, when people would work and you'd be off on a weekend or whatever. But he had to kind of like work on a weekend and it's still paying him the same salary or whatever. So mm -hmm. he he didn't stay there too long. And as for Evergreen over there, my sister told me when. My dad was sort of like a boss, I guess you would say, right there. And, and if you go right now, that she showed me that house where we used to live at, and in the back was where the, the real the slaves were, mm -hmm. used to live. And he would always tell us, "Don't go back there." And then, of course, you know we were small, and then he always used to tell them, "Don't go back there." And then she told me from there they went, they walked to school coming this way too, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. we went. We had a, a family reunion, and we went back there and visit, you know, that, that evergreen mm -hmm. place over there. Yeah. And then they have the Whitney Plantation. Um, we went over there, too, for, on a tour. Mm -hmm. And um, that the tour guide told us where they had something like a, like a little... Maybe about the size of this kitchen or a little bit bigger, and it was a graveyard. And he said the the women would have babies, and they had to work. And some of them, they, they, they worked until all they did was stood up, and the baby just came out. And he said that, that and he said that's, that's all that was in the little graveyard there. And that was so sad. That made me cry. In St. Philip, we had... We had three bedrooms, and it wasn't all that 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 big, you know. And then the kitchen, and then when we moved to another house, we had a the, it was much bigger than than, than that one because we had we had five bedrooms in that one. And I think that was a double house, but they just let it go mm -hmm. as as you know as one. It was just us, and like I said, my grandmother and my grandfather lived with us. Well, really, it really was unjust. It was very unjust. We went to school, and we got books, but we got all the books from the white school. Oh. They sent the books to us. Some of them had pages missing, and mm -hmm. they had they were written Drawing stuff written in the books mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. hey, it was very unfair. And like I said, and, and when we did get a school bus, we had one school bus. They had to serve. In the morning, the bus driver would pick us up first because the bus was parked right where we he had to pick us up. Mm -hmm. So in the evening, we would be the last one mm -hmm. to come home because he had to do all 
the of the road. I may name was Mr. Ben. I'll never forget Mr. Ben. <laughs> And then we walked to school from around, you know, you all probably not familiar with St. Philip, but we walked from, from there all the way mm -hmm. to, to the school and, you know, come back. Mm -hmm. This thing, I remember we used to walk to school. There was a group of us, you mm -hmm. know, we lived in a little neighborhood and we all walked to school. And they had this school that we had to pass to come home. There was a white school bus driver, oh, you know, white yeah. school. He used to line up the children mm -hmm. on the pavement so when we came there to come to our house, you know, he had expected us to sit there. We were walking all right, but we were supposed to stand there and tell the children, get on a bus, and then we would go. But they had this girl, she, one day she told us, she said, you know, we're not, we not waiting this morning. She was tall and she, she, she was a big person, and she got in the front. And when she got to that line, she held her head way up there, and she just went through. And we all followed after that. That after that, that man, when he see us coming, he just leave a path for us to pass, yeah. you know. And sometimes, I mean, you would walk to school, you would go to, say, for instance, like a day to day. Mm -hmm. You would go to school, and it would be nice and everything. And then when you uh, come back home, mm -hmm. you got to leave your book books at home and here you're standing on a school step hating to get in that, right. in that rain, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we had to walk back home. Mm -hmm. And they had these uh, ladies that used to live in that clear. But for some reason, they was hauling water from the well and everywhere else. And they would always have, they would expect us to stop and drink at their house mm -hmm. every day, even though we was almost home. Mm -hmm. Every time I talk about church, I get angry because I think that's the place we should have been treated like people, but we wasn't. Uh, okay, they had one, two, three, uh, you know, pews on the side. The pews on the side was a little smaller, and the two down the, the, the middle aisle was, was big pews, and they were long, and then they had another little pew on the side. So, and then we had not... Both of them, not, but just one side of that little pew, mm -hmm. and that was for the black people. And even though they had empty pews, because that church was so big, mm -hmm. you, but you couldn't sit in it. And most of the time, then the men would kneel down in, in, in the aisle and mm -hmm. just let the women sit on that side. And of course, everything they did, we were always last. Even for going to communion and, and May Blessing and all that kind of stuff, we was always last. And until today, <laughs> I told them children, I don't know why I stayed Catholic, because even like I said today, when I talk about that, that makes me really, really, really angry. My sister, she told me she remember uh, when, when you had to go practice for communion, they had them to kneel, and, and they were kneeling on, on the shelves out there, and the white children was on the grasses. And they, when they would have First Communion, like I said, they was first for everything. Now, the one thing that happened in church one time, they was having, you know how sometimes after Mass they would have kissing the cross and then all of my, my sister told me she just started going kiss the cross. Because we had to go last, you know. So she, one time they had something going on in church and we was waiting there, but they had to do what they had to do. But, you know, it was just them. They, they didn't have nothing to do with us at all. Mm -hmm. So everybody just got out of, you know, the black people, they just got out of church and they started walking out. Mm -hmm. And then the priest hollered, you know, where y'all going? I mean, you know, uh, this and that. And people just kept on walking. Mm -hmm. And one time they had a lady there, she was a visitor, and she came, she walked through that big door right in the front at mm -hmm. Philip Church. And uh, she must have sat down somewhere, because you know, when we was young, we go to church, go to church early and, mm -hmm. and stand up yeah. in front of the church and talking and all mm -hmm. that. And that lady came out of that church, and that lady said, the hell away with this church. Mm -hmm. And she said it loud, but she, um, I said she had to be a visitor, and then she just woke out. She must have went in church and sit in the wrong pew. Somebody told her something. And like I said, we was, we'd go to church and we would stay on the outside until, you know, Mass was almost ready to, because uh, he got this old man, he was an old man, and he went and he sat in church, him and his wife were sitting in church, and this man came and told him, you know, he was in the wrong place. See that old man told him, Mon bien, toi tout pas bien? 
That man stay there. He ain't never move. Mm-hmm. Ask him if uh, he, he's all right. You're not all right. Yeah. And like I said, all what they did is everything we went through, being poor, working hard, all of this didn't mean nothing but that church. But I need to get that out of my heart. That 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 ain't supposed to be still haunt me, but it does. Mm-hmm.